Now I know this technically isn't a notion, but it's always with my knitting supplies because I use it a lot. If you like to knit in the evening, but you don't want to turn on all of the overhead lights, or if you're using dark yarn and you really need to see what you're doing, a neck light where you can adjust the lights and adjust the way they move is perfect thing to have with your knitting tools. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter and the goal here at Nerdy Knitting is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. Now in this video, I thought we would dive into the notions that I keep in my little notions kit. This little bag right here where I keep all of the notions that I usually keep with me whenever I'm working on a project. I can grab this bag and it's got everything I need in it. And I'm also going to share some of your favorites as well. I recently asked what you love to keep in your notions toolkit when you're knitting and you shared lots of great responses with me. So we're going to add those in and sprinkle them throughout this video as well. While I'm sharing my favorites, I'll share yours too. You'll find a couple things linked down below. First is the community post that originally inspired this video where I asked you about your favorite notions. There were lots of great comments. I'm going to share some of them in this video, but people are still adding more comments. So of course I can't add them after I've recorded the video. You'll also find another video about notions that I don't use, things I've tried and I don't use anymore. And also there's tons of comments in that video and on that video about the notions you tried and don't use either. So you'll want to check that video out. I'll link it down below and at the end End of this video so you can head over and watch that after we talk about the notions that we do use. The first thing on the list are snips and scissors. Now these are the snips I have in my bag. I really don't think it matters what kind of little snips or scissors you use. These are just, I think, Fiskars little snips I got from Michaels. They work really well for snipping my yarn tails or even I've used them if I have to steek something, I can use them to cut right up the edge and that works really well. And Jenny agrees with me. She says, I never knit without tiny snips in my bags, the little ones in bright colors with silicone cap on a leash that pops over the blade tips. Mine doesn't have any sort of blade tips, but I do like the ones that have little caps so you're not cutting anything else in your bag. And as I'm recording this, I just remembered that I did not include something that's super important and that is tapestry needles or sewing needles or whatever you want to call them. You need some kind of needles to weave in the ends. I have just this little set from Clover that has some bent little needle tips and they work really well for weaving in the ends, but tapestry needles. I don't know why I forgot to add that to my list, but definitely something that is in my notions kit. Another thing in my notions kit are these needle keepers. I use these for my circular needles. You put your needle tips into this little silicone tubing right here. I've got some in there right now actually with another project. You just slide them in and they hold them in place. They're a bit noisy, but my needle tips are not going to poke through my bags or like damage my project or my yarn or anything like that. So I like those for circular needles. I've got like a set of three. I'm still looking for some that I like for DPNs. I've tried the little cardboard tubes. I'm not a fan of those, but other people did leave some comments with some recommendations for needle keepers. So I'm going to share those with you now. Laura says bulb stitch markers, a mini scale tape measure, scissors, needles, pencil, and a needle cozy for your DPN projects. The fabric envelope snap shut to keep your projects together. You can find them on Etsy and she thinks they are a lifesaver for unruly needles. So I'm still in the searching mode for trying to find something for my DPNs or small needles when I'm knitting socks and things like that. Because of course you, these are great for circulars, but they don't really work for DPNs or sock needles. So I've heard good things about these little fabric fabric envelopes. And another comment from 11 Fox and Pine Stitches, who I just looked up, really cute stuff on there, makes great fabric DPN covers. I find they keep things or in order in my project bag, particularly when I'm traveling. And she also likes their stitch stoppers and spiral cable needles too. That's another thing I'm looking into. I have a few favorite cable needles. I have a lot I've tried I don't like, but I've heard good things about the spiral one. So I want to give that one a try. Now, if you're really on a budget and you don't want to buy like needle keepers or things like that, here are some great tips. This one, needle stopper protector hack. I use foam earplugs as needle stoppers. You don't have to worry about finding the right size to fit your needle. Also, if you don't push them all the way through the plug, your needles won't poke your bag fabric. You can find these in big tubs much cheaper than actual needle stoppers. That's a really great tip. I've tried those like little needle stoppers that come in like little notions kits and I haven't found any that I've loved. So I've this is a really great way to just protect your needle tips. The absolute best thing as needle stoppers are silicone beads. You can buy bulk packs in cute colors and patterns online for really cheap and they're very secure. Just poke the needle tip into one of the bead holes and you're good to go. The 15 millimeter size works for most needles unless you're working with chunkier yarn. 
So really great tip. Silicone beads are another good option. And one more from Sarah. I love those little needle toppers. When I use DPNs, I'm always worried my stitches are going to slide off. So I just put the needle toppers on each DPN and rotate them as I knit. Works great. I love that tip. I have had my stitches come off my needle sometimes. So using your needle stoppers to just keep on the end of the needle. So sort of like it's like a little straight needle at that point when you have those on the end. A really great way to use those needle stoppers if you have them. But I'm still on the lookout for other needle keepers. I love these for my circulars. They're a bit clangy and noisy, but they work really well. But for other needles, I still haven't found what I love, but I think I'm gonna try maybe some silicone beads or even those earplugs. It's a really good cheap way to to keep the ends of your needles. But I think I'm going to put a, one of those like sort of fabric DPN covers on my Christmas list to give a try. Maybe we'll see how those work out too. Now another thing in my Notions kit are things to hold stitches, either a large amount of stitches, so if I want to try on a top-down sweater as I'm knitting it, or small amounts of stitches like underarm stitches or like the thumb gusset, things like that. So I have a few different things I like. I like these sort of stitch holders. They are almost like a little needle themselves. Both of the ends pop out of this, this little plastic piece. So you can see it's just that. So you slide your needles onto that and then you slide this, you just pop it onto the ends just like that and it holds your stitches. And then what I love about these is I can knit directly from them. I don't have to transfer stitches when I'm ready to like resume knitting those stitches. I can just pop this off and knit my stitches directly from the, the, the tip of the, the holder. And the other one I like is for larger projects or larger sections of stitches like if I'm trying on a sweater all it is is just a needle tip and it's attached to a long cord and it has like this little stopper on the end so I can slip all of my stitches like half of the body stitches or whatever to this and then um I can use that I can poke that through the other end and it's going to hold all of my stitches just like that hold them in place so this is nice for a large amount of stitches. Now, other ideas for this that, I don't know why I didn't think of this, but it's so brilliant. A few people left this, these comments. For stitches I need to put on hold, I often just remove my needle tips from the existing cable and twist on the cable stoppers. Then when I need to resume, I can just reattach the needle tips. Granted, I have plenty of cords and tips for this. I also like the ones with the needle on one end of the clear plastic cord and the a foam stopper, like this one. And then this comment for stitch holders, I tend to use circular needles with interchangeable points. I just take off the points and screw on those end pieces that you can use if you want to use them as straight needles. Then you don't have to worry about getting them back on the needles since they never left. So that's really a great idea if you have extra cording, like if you're working on a project and you need to put a section of your stitches on hold, leave them on their circular needle cable and just take out your needle tips and put those cord stoppers on the end and leave them right there. Then you don't have to transfer stitches. If you don't mind transferring stitches, another option is barber cord. And this seems to be a love-hate relationship. We talked about this in our other notions video. And there were a lot of people who dislike it, but a lot of comments left about from people who really like barber cord. Now, I think it looks really cool. I've never tried it. The point of it is just like a hollow tube you stick the end of this tube onto your, your needle tip and then you can slide your stitches over onto the tube itself and then you, your needle is free to use for something else or another part of the project. Uh, but the big issue generally with these is too, some people find that they don't stay on it and they're like sliding stitches over and it pops off the end of the needle. And also the price. If you look up these barber cords, you'll probably see that they can be pretty expensive, but there are alternatives to buying the expensive barber cord version. Like this comment, I purchased some rubber hollow cording that apparently jewelry makers use. I use it in place of the very expensive barber cords. I just slide the needle tips onto the cording. It works like barber cords and keeps the stitches from falling off, win-win. So there are definitely ways you can try barber cord without having to spend those expensive pricey things. It is pretty expensive just for some hollow tubing. So I guess you just have to look for the hollow tubing and not technically barber cord and you'll find some other options that work exactly the same, but for less money. Now I know a neck light is technically not a knitting notion, but it's always with my supplies because if I'm knitting in the evening and I don't want to turn on all of the overhead lights, I just want some light on my project. Or if I'm using really dark yarn, even if it's daylight, I'll use this for extra light. All you do is put it around your neck and it's got a uh, little 
buttons you can push to adjust the lighting add more or less and this kind just plugs into like a little uh, HDMI thing right there to recharge it's really nice there's tons of these all over the place I've, I'm not particularly tied to this brand it works really well the things are bendy it's just a really nice thing to have in your notions kit even well I guess I guess we would call this uh, maybe a knitting tool instead of a notion but for me it's definitely something I love to use and I love to have with my supplies especially because I like to knit with dark yarn quite a lot and I need that extra light no notions list is going to be complete without stitch markers I'm sure we all have our favorites and the ones we don't like I've tried some that I just could not like or use and I talk about them in the other video so you can go watch that but there are some that I love I love to use them to mark the beginning of round to set off sections of stitch patterns especially if I'm working in lace to use like to mark off my rows when I'm counting rows in a project or decreases or increases I use them a lot and there are three kinds that I really love first are the little light bulb style just the little metal light bulb one safety pins coil the safety pins whatever you want to call them i love these i use these to mark my um my rows if i'm counting rows in a project i like those or if i'm counting decreases or increases and i, I like to pop these right into the increase or decrease so i can count from there and then of course i love these little plastic ones when i want something a little bit bigger just a little plastic safety pin these specifically i've heard a lot of people say they end up breaking i've never had that issue these are from nitpicks and um perhaps there are some other maybe different types of plastics that are that break more easily but i've never had a problem with these i've never broken one i love to use these if i'm knitting something and i need to like mark the beginning of round but i have to lock it in place then I use it for that or if I have to if I know I'm going to be sewing two pieces together I use this kind to like attach them and clip them together along that seam line so everything is lined up really well and the third kind I like are just little rings and I've got lots of these this is one from like the chow goo needles which are really nice they're just little resin rings I have little metal rings um, I have other ones oh even when my daughter had braces the elastics from her braces i stole all her extra ones those little the little elastics they are perfect especially well i like them when i'm knitting lace because i can like leave them on the lifeline and they're not like stitch markers that you know i have to like sort of rescue from the project i can snip them right out if i have to like they're nothing wrong they're just elastic those are really nice for that but these are probably my favorite types of stitch markers and stitch markers were on everybody's list of comments and says I'm an old schooler and before those nifty little light bulb progress keepers came along we had gold coilless safety pins I still use these to mark the center of my work and my progress and then another idea for stitch holders small rubber bands for hair kids use them to make those loom bracelets they come in multiple colors so you can actually have a color code of this for increase this for decrease I use those a lot for stitch markers and also a row counter I can slip that on a stitch and then just cut it out later and if I'm doing double pointed needles I can wrap them on the ends of it and I won't lose any stitches on the double points so those that's a really great way to use those rubber bands for loom bracelets I haven't looked them up so I'm not sure what they are but definitely multi-purpose when you can use them for so many different things and then another comment this is a great topic I've been knitting for decades and have recently seen a huge surge in expensive unnecessary accessories becoming trendy I find some knitting vloggers focus as much on their project bags now as on their projects I use Ziploc bags because I can easily see what's in them I also don't use manufactured plastic stitch markers to me they're awkward to use and don't transfer easily on my needles I make my own stitch markers out of scrap 100% wool that I tie in a loop wet and then felt where I tied them by rolling each one between my fingers I have a selection of specific colors for marking specific sections stored with each project I love that so if you're very thrifty and you've got some leftover scraps you can make your own little stitch markers as well and felted wool that'll hold up really well and if you use different colors I love that idea of using different ones for different things really great tip now another thing in my knitting bag is just simple embroidery floss like it's nothing special you can just buy this at any craft store I've got tons of it because I do cross stitch and embroidery I used to do it a ton I haven't touched it in a long time but I still have a lot of embroidery floss so I use this when I need to have a lifeline or if I'm using waste yarn or when I'm not using a stitch holder sometimes um, my stitch holders might be too large if I'm using like a fingering weight yarn so I can take my embroidery floss and even split up the plies and just use a few plies 
for my waist yarn or my lifeline or whatever. But if you don't have embroidery floss or you want to use something else, there were tons of great comments about that as well. Here are some of them that I found. I like to keep a roll of fishing line and a pen in my notions bag. I use the fishing line when I want to put in a lifeline. And then I use the pen in case I want to make notes on my pattern or for counting rows. So fishing line is a great choice if, you, if you're a fisher fisherman or fisherwoman or your husband's a fisherman then maybe they've got some fishing line that you can nab and use as a lifeline that would be nice and sturdy I think another option when I'm knitting a larger project I always keep a small package of dental floss in my notions bag for lifelines I take take a piece of it and thread it through my knitter's pride zing needle keyhole and knit it through easy peasy lifeline so I've definitely heard of dental floss I've never tried that one before but definitely an option and I like that it's thin enough that if you have those interchangeables with a little hole, you can like feed your lifeline through as you're knitting your, that round or row and it will add the lifeline right away. So you don't have to sort of like put it on a tapestry needle and feed it through your stitches. And another great option is the number three crochet cotton, the doily thread for lifelines, provisional cast on, and even to keep completed pieces of projects like knit toys or amigurumi together until I'm ready to assemble. So those are some great choices for using for lifelines or like she says, provisional cast ons or anytime you need some sort of a thread and you don't want to use your yarn, then these are all great options. If you have another option that you use for something like this, leave a comment and share it with us and go check out those comments because you guys leave so many great ideas and tips and advice that I love to see what you have to say. Another essential in my knitting notions case are crochet hooks, specifically for picking up dropped stitches, but sometimes you need them, like sometimes you have a project that might have a little bit of crochet in it, or sometimes I've done some projects where I wanted to do some crochet duplicate stitch and crochet hook is perfect for that. Now I really love this set from Knit Picks. They're double-ended, so you get all of the different sizes for your crochet hooks but you only have them in like a few only have a few hooks you don't need like a whole big set I think there are four in this set there might be one more somewhere or maybe it's just the three um, but you've got all of the different sizes double ended so it's just they're easy to grab they're small and I can find the right size I need for whatever yarn I'm using and they work really well for picking up stitches especially when your yarn is slippery and it's hard to get your needle tip back in there and you keep and things just keep falling and falling apart and you're freaking out a little then a crochet hook to get in there and pick up those stitches and just work them back up onto your needle is a really good thing to have in your case and I'm not the only one who thinks that these are my favorite videos. I can't wait. I'm a new knitter and purchased several things I don't need use, but I can't do a stitch without my Susan Bates crochet tool for drop stitches. And then Happy Fox, of course, stitch markers, progress keepers, and little scissors, but I also like to keep a crochet hook available just in case a stitch gets dropped. And hand balm, my fingers tend to get a bit dry working with wool in the colder months. I look forward to seeing what other items others like to keep in their notions bag. Now I forgot about that lotion or hand balm or something too. I notice the same thing in the summer. I'm usually okay, but when the weather starts to get cold and it's just more dry in the house, then something like lotion or hand balm is really nice for keeping your fingers from snagging your yarn. Have you ever done that where your fingers are so dry that you can snag your delicate yarns? But definitely crochet hooks and I guess hand balm should have been on my list as well. Now the last thing I always have in my notions kit is a ruler. This is just a hard sided ruler. This one is just an old one I picked up at a yard sale so it's got like some needle gauges on there as well but it's got like metric on one side and inches on the other so I can measure things when I'm when I need to measure something. I like to use a hard sided ruler when I'm doing my gauge measurements and things like that. Sometimes I use a fabric measuring tape as well. I have one of those in my notions kit too. I'm not sharing every single thing in there but just the things I use a lot. But the fabric ones can stretch out over time so of course that's going to mess with your measurements so you do have to replace them occasionally. But I like a hard sided one just because of course that's not going to stretch out with time. I'm sure you probably have something to measure your work in progress as well in your knitting notions kit. Like Jane, she says, snips, crochet hook, light bulb markers, a tape measure, and a pencil and paper are always with me. And I, I'm guessing a lot of us have sort of the same kinds of notions that we always like to have with us. Now, if you're using like a little one inch ruler, throw it away. Stop using it. I talk about that in the other video. That is one of my biggest dislikes. They're so cute, those little tiny one inch gauge rulers, but they're completely useless. You can't take a good measurement with that. You need to measure a larger area. So I like my little six inch ruler because six inches is good for a swatch to get that measured. 
but those little one inch ones, I really dislike those. So that's everything in my bag, but there were a ton more comments. So we're gonna go through some of your comments to see what other things are in your Notions kits. Now, one of the first things was row counters. So this is also something we discussed in the other video because I've used them. I have like a digital one and like a little mechanical one and used them, tried them, forget about them. I never use them now because I just, I don't find I need them. But it seems to be almost a 50-50 split, pretty co close. I asked about this because in that last video when we talked about row counters, there were a ton of people who, yes, never use them and then a ton of people who swear by their row counters. So I did a poll asking about those who use them and those who don't and these are the results you can see it's a pretty close even split. So personally, I don't use one and a lot of people don't, but there are some who love them. So I wanted to highlight their comments this time. I always keep a stitch row counter. It has helped me with keeping track of different rows when I've started larger projects. It definitely helped with my first cable scarf. Definitely it's, yeah, you need to keep track of your rows when you're knitting cables so you don't forget a cable crossing or put it in the wrong place. So some way to keep track of your rows for cables is really important. And then this comment, stitch markers and a row counter, the basic one you place on your needles. Most of my projects involve multiple colors and intricate graphics I design myself, so these two tools help me keep track of what and where I'm at. And another one, a row counter. I know it's an unpopular opinion. Actually not, it seems to be an even split. And stitch markers, because while knitting or crocheting, I can't seem to be able to keep track of my rows. Well, use whatever you can to keep track of your rows, whether that's a row counter, pen and paper, or stitch markers in your projects, whatever gets you there. For me, it's stitch markers. When I'm trying to keep track of things, I usually put them right in my project to keep track of where I'm at. And then one more, I love my Red Clover row counter. My aunt bought me one in the US, I live in London. I use it for almost every project. So as you can see, there's a lot of people who love their row counters as well. So are you team row counter or no row counter? Where, where do you fall in that debate? We have a few more comments there. Technically not notions, but things that we probably all use as knitters. Probably not what most people think of when they think of notions and tools for knitting, but something to take notes on and a calculator. I make a lot of my own patterns and both are invaluable. Definitely, definitely. I use note paper and post-it notes too. I like to, po if I have a printed pattern, I'll put a post-it note on there sometimes and a pen, calculator for checking gauge and all of those measurements, definitely important. And then I love this one for Portuguese style knitting. I knit Portuguese style, so to me a knitting necklace or knitting pin is a must, special, especially with more rustic or hairy yarn. I have a knitting necklace that doubles as jewelry. I love that, so you can just wear it and it's right there when you need it. And then New York Knitter, same here. I could go around the neck with my yarns, but I share enough of my hair in my projects. Pin or necklace in every project bag, the jewelry ones are nice since I don't always remember to remove it. So I love that tip if you're a Portuguese style knitter. What do you use to keep track, keep that yarn in place? And I love this one about cats. This is an odd one, but a blanket. My cat cannot be trusted around my projects, so I lay a throw blanket on top of them while I'm working. Generally one of the most important things I keep in my knitting corner at home. Great tip, that's a good way to keep the cat hair off your project. And here's another one with some really good tips. I can't live without my Coco Knits metal stitch markers. I've tried dozens of others, but these just work every time. Also, I have a clear plastic tube that held a pen that's perfect to hold an upholstery needle, cable needle, T-pins for swapping interchangeable needles, a pair of thread snips, and a small crochet hook for fixes. Also, I can't live without binder clips. I use them to attach my pattern to almost any surface around me or to keep my place in a chart by holding a piece of cardstock or other material on the current row. I hadn't thought about using binder clips, but that's a really neat way to keep things organized. And I love this comment about using a magnet wand. It's a strong magnet covered with little pear-shaped pins, useful for stitch markers or to capture drop stitches, etc. My tiny scissors, one crochet hook, useful to drop down columns and fix wrong stitches or for the three needle bind off, and several darning needles for weaving in, weaving in ends. The magnet just grabs everything so I never lose my stuff. Very portable and no containers that spill my notions. So I love that, having a magnet that keeps all of your ma your metal things organized and in one place, it's really good. A few people mentioned a thimble as well, if you're the type of person who pushes on your needle tip with your finger and it starts to get sore. I have fibromyalgia, the repetitive pushing on the left needle tip makes my right hand pointing finger hurt, and she found finger tops made of silicone by searching Etsy and Amazon, but if you look for things uh, for musicians for guitar picking, you can use the same thing, so that's a really great resource to look at other things for other crafts or arts or music and see how you can use them with your knitting. 
And then Karen says, locking stitch markers, crochet hook, and a band-aid or a silicone embroidery thimble because I will never ever break the habit of pushing the stitches off my needle. And she mentioned some other things, sharp needles, blunt needle tip for duplicate stitch and weaving in ends, a pen to mark things, and good hand lotion to stop that dry skin nagging on woolly yarns. And along with a hand lotion, Sarah Lindy says, I really don't like to be without my small tape measure or a handful of ball pins, but honestly what has saved me often is a good pair of nail clippers. I'm prone to hang nails or rough cuticles and clippers has saved me from snagging on my work many a time. You can also use them in a pinch when your scissors invariably go missing. So definitely anything. We're getting to that season where things are dry and our hands might be drier and that can really affect how our knitting project feels. I find that's also when my finger, because I do get that little thing on my finger where I'm pushing my needle tip and if my hands are dry, it seems to be worse. So yeah, lotion or balm or something, especially in the winter is really something it should be in your notions kit, I think. In the last one, my cell phone is my most important notion. It's the device where I keep my patterns, where I make my notations, modifications, road tracking, take progress and finished photos, all the good stuff. My process starts and finishes with my phone. That feels like it should be a poll. Are you a person who does everything on your phone or other device? Or are you uh, print it out and take notes and use a handheld row counter? I'm wondering if that would be like a 50-50 split like the row counter would be. Seems like something we're going to have to explore. But that is everything that I love to have in my Notions kit. There are other things, of course, but those are like my top things that I use all of the time. And if you feel like there's something that we missed that we should have talked about, then please leave a comment and let's continue this conversation about those Notions that you love to have in your toolkit. And you're going to want to watch this video next where we talk about the Notions I don't use, the things I've tried but I just don't use anymore. And it also has lots of comments and advice from other knitters as well about the Notions that they don't use. And there's tons of comments on there about the Notions they do love. So you're going to want to click through and I'll see you in the next video.